All right, so this is gonna be the demonstration on how to throw on the wheel. Um, the first thing you wanna do when you're on the wheel is you want to have a bucket half full of water. You wanna have a sponge, you wanna have a needle tool, and you also wanna have a wooden tool. The wheels um, are set up so the, most of them can go either direction. If you are left-handed, you want the wheel to go clockwise. And if you're right-handed, you want the wheel to go counterclockwise. So make sure that your wheel is spinning in the right direction based on if you're left-handed or right-handed. The wheels have two pegs. Make sure if you, the peg does come out that you replace it. Those are kind of buggers that run off and we need them. You're gonna need a bat if your bat is dirty, like this one. Just throw on a dirty bat. Do not get it wet because your clay will not Put your bat on your wheel. These are your splash pans. You are going to start with the large splash pan first. It goes at an angle underneath. And you have to shimmy it. Shimmy, shimmy. And in. And then the smaller one goes on top and the two little holes are angled to get in the pegs. To turn your wheel on, make sure that your foot pedal, your heel is pointing towards the ground. You'll turn the wheel on, and to make the motor go, your toe points down towards the floor. You can always set the speed of your wheel by taking your foot off the pedal. They should hold that speed. That way you don't have to worry about them speeding up or slowing down as you throw. When you're ready to throw, take your piece of clay. It should already be wedged. You're gonna smack it down quite hard on the middle of your bat. If it's not quite in the middle, you can shimmy it over. Try to get it in the center. Your dominant hand, if you're right hand or left hand, your dominant hand, the palm should be at about five or six o'clock. Your thumb stays on the bat and your fingers kind of point up towards the sky and they stay together. Your other hand comes on top and the compression between the two palms is what makes the clay spin and become centered. So go ahead and wet your hand. You're gonna use your dominant hand first. You can start your wheel and just take your dominant hand, try to keep it in the position so that the palm is at five or six o'clock, your thumb is on the bat, and your wheel, your fingers are staying together. Once you have that down, you can then bring in your other hand. Make sure that your palms are opposite of one another. Your dominant fingers go on top and your recessive thumb goes on top. When I throw, I like to have my knees a little bit higher and my elbows on my knees so I can really compress. You gotta tell it who's boss. Try to compress your hands to the point where you are not moving, your clay is not moving. To check it, if you take a needle tool, you can hold it at about four o'clock if you're left-handed, it would be at about eight o'clock. Hold your needle tool still. If your needle touches all the way around, it's in center. Look at this, I got a little piece of clay in there. Nice. Pick it out if there's something in there. Always make sure your piece is in center. Try to have your hands kind of clean. Sounds weird, but wipe off that slurry and slip. And then the second step is to open. So I take my hands on the outside, I put my thumbnails back to back, and the wheel's moving a little bit faster than before. And you press down about three-fourths the way down. This is called opening. To check the thickness of your bottom, if you put your needle tool in, 
mark where the clay starts, that's how deep my bottom is. So that's as deep as I want to go. Sometimes your clay gets out of center as you're opening. So once you have the opening, take your hands on the outside of the clay, drop in your thumbs and squeeze between your thumb and the palm of your hand. You can also rub a little bit of your thumb on the bottom to compress the bottom. After opening, you should have a little bit of a flat bottom, a very, very thick wall, but it looks more like a shape of a pot or a bowl versus a volcano. Sometimes I like to do that step a few times and I kind of angle my hand to pull that a little bit. The last step to throwing is to pull. Your recessive hand goes on the inside, so I'm right-handed, so my left hand goes on the inside. My right hand stays on the outside, and my three little fingers are in the inside for support but it's the middle fingers that do the work. So my fingers are inside the wheel and it goes bink. And my little finger, my middle finger is pointing out. My middle fingers stay opposite of one another and I slowly move my hand up the wheel. Once you're at the top, always check your lip. The important thing is that your two middle fingers stay opposite of one another and you slowly rise with the pace of the wheel. So your middle fingers do the work but your other fingers are there to support. So this is a basic cylinder shape. You'll need to make two cylinders both with feet, one you'll make into a mug. Well, that's pretty good. Try to pay attention to the thickness. Most of your clay is down at the bottom. If your lip is uneven and rocky, you can take your needle tool, place your finger on the inside. This is my recessive finger and I just trim off the lip. Make sure to round that lip off and get it nice. Take out any extra water from the bottom. 